So I'm going to talk about aligning your um, electrophysiology data to your histology data. Um, I'm going to give a brief introduction, um, then going to talk about some of the tools that we've been developing, particularly for working with um, 3D whole brain histology data. Um, then Pearl will talk about the tool that she's been developing, and then um, May will end talking about what they do at the IBL. Um, so kind of why would you want to align your EFIS data to your um, anatomy data? Hopefully this is fairly obvious. I mean, you've learned how to you know, how you can record from hundreds of cells at once using your pixels. Um, but this data on its own is not, you know, it's not necessarily that useful unless you know where each of these recordings came from. You need to know for each recording site where in the brain you're recording from. But also if you're recording from multiple animals as well, you need a way of being able to combine this information in a common um, spatial reference frame so you can, you know, pull data from the same brain region from multiple animals together. And so the typical way that this is done um, is using fluorescence microscopy. Um, and the way that you track the probe is by labeling it with some kind of fluorescent dye like dye. Um, there's lots of different types, types of dyes for doing, you know, working with different kinds of imaging techniques. But the general idea is that you coat your probe, you, um, you, know, you insert this coated probe into the, into the brain and carry out your recordings as normal. And then after you've carried out your experiment, you've sacrificed the animal, you extract the brain and you image it under some kind of fluorescence microscope. Um, I'm going to talk about tools for processing whole brain 3D data, for example, from tissue clear from um, brains that have been cleared optically and then imaged with light tree microscopy, or all the images I'm going to show here are from serial section to photon. But there's plenty of tools that are available for I think pretty much any kind of um, imaging technique, and certainly for 2D imaging, things like confocal or slide scanners. And then once you've imaged the brain, you should hopefully get something like this. So this is a whole brain microscopy image. Um, it's projection from a, it's a mouse brain. Um, hopefully you can see the olfactory bulb here at the front and the cerebellum at the back. And then there's this very bright um, neuropixels probe track. So this is leftover dye um, that's in the brain once the probe has been removed. And this marks the location of where the probe track was. Um, and then the next step, which is roughly common to all the methods um, that you might be able to use, is to take your raw data. Again, this is the same data set, just in a slightly different format. So the image has been cut in half, so you can see part of the probe here. Um, and then you align this data, you register it to an atlas. And by registration, we just mean we manipulate one image such that it overlaps another one. So you take your atlas image and the software will do some kind of, some kind of um, rigid registration, things like rotation, translation, and scaling, some nonlinear, um, and then some kind of affine registration steps like shearing. And finding some nonlinear warping so that the atlas image will fit kind of perfectly over, over your data. Um, and then from here, you know, even at a glance, you can see that your probe track is in a particular region of the brain. Um, but then you can segment out your probe either automatically or manually, because it's quite easy because they're just 1D structures. Um, and then use the software will give you some way of assigning um, recording sites to a specific region of the brain. So for this um, probe track here, we know that. About half the probe is in primary visual cortex. Some of it's going through the bio tracks and the rest going through the hippocampus. And the other benefit as well as of registering your data to an atlas, as well as knowing you know, for each part of the probe where you are in the brain, it also allows you tr to transform data to a common space. So that here we have the probe tracks from seven different animals um, of all had recordings in primary visual cortex. And we can see here that they're all you know, roughly in the same place, but it's also useful to know that if you're, you know, if you're implantations didn't go exactly to plan and you might have hit a different area. And the tools I'm going to talk about are all part of the Brain Globe suite of computational neuroanatomy tools, um, but I'm just going to talk about a couple of them. The first is BrainReg, which allow you to do this actual registration step. Um, BrainReg is a 3D whole brain um, registration tool that will take your raw 3D data it will transform it into, um, it will trans it will um, align it to an atlas um, that's provided by the Brain Web Atlas API, um, which basically just means you can select from a number of different atlases from different species or with different annotations and things like that. And then once your data has been registered, you can segment out any structure. These tools were not specifically designed for your pixels probes, but you can use them for that. You can segment out 3D structures or for a probe, you can segment out um, a 1D structure. Um, and then we also have various tools that allow you to do visualization um, within multiple atlases. So here, looking at primary visual cortex in one atlas, the Allen Mouse Brain Atlas, um, and exactly the same, or sort of the same data in a different atlas in the um, Enhanced and Unified Mouse Brain Atlas um, from Young Su Kim's lab. Um, 
And then also just to say kind of briefly, this approach using our tools has been validated. Um, you can read the paper and I'll provide links and things. And um, we got multiple, lots of people to use these software on multiple brains. Um, and then we compared electrophysiological landmarks in this case here, particularly the peak of LFP power um, in the midpoint of layer five of primary visual cortex. And we compared this electrophysiological landmark to the, um, the, the anatomy reported by the software. And um, the take home is basically that you know, at least in our experiments, um, the difference between these two landmarks is quite close. It's about 60 or 70 microns. And um, some of that's probably user error. Some of that is probably um, inaccuracies in the registration. But also a lot of it is just because actually coating your probe in dye and then carrying out histology after that and imaging is still a relatively crude um, method. So there's always going to be inaccuracies there. Um, but I want to caution that, you know, Histology can vary a lot and, you know, different brain regions can be affected differently by different um, sample preparation. So make sure that you validate these approaches in your data, you know, in the brain regions that you care about using the imaging modality, um, rather than just, you know, trusting whatever is in our paper or someone else's. Um, so I'm going to give a brief demo of kind of how the software works. Um, in the interest of time, this is just a recording. Um, knowingly, the recording doesn't take it hasn't included some of the um, pop-up menu options but hopefully you probably get an idea and um, so all of our tools are built as plugs for Napari so this is if you haven't heard of Napari it's a multi-dimensional image viewer written in Python that has a now a vast array of image processing plugins um, quite similar to Fiji if you've used that and if you open up Napari you can basically just drag and drop your data into the software it supports most common file formats and you can see here we have a whole brain image of a mouse brain. Um, and hopefully you can see this probe track, which is this region of high intensity um, going through primary visual cortex here. So this is what we want to, um, to segment and to analyze. And so the first step is to open up the brain reg plugin. You can't see it, but you just go to plugins and then brain reg. There's a few boxes to fill in. You choose the image you want to register, the atlas you want to use, give it some metadata things like the orientation and the voxel sizes, choose where you want to save your data, somewhere on disk, and then you just press run. And um, there are some various parameters here that you might need to change eventually, um, but usually you don't need to tweak these too much. Um, this does take a while, usually it takes a few minutes to run depending on the atlas and the resolution of your data. Um, in this demo, it's you know, magically happened instantly. And you can see here that we overlay the boundaries of the different brain regions. You can see that it's done a pretty good job um, I can't see any obvious mistakes, but there's, um, it's done a pretty good job at registering um, the atlas onto the sample. And we can hear, see here that, as we thought, this probe track is going through primary visual cortex. But we want to segment out this properly and report for each region along the probe where. Open up this other plugin called Brain Reg Segment that takes in the output of um, the Brain Reg plugin. And you can do this analysis either in sample space um, so with the atlas overlaid onto your image or in atlas space. So with your sample warped to the atlas. And this is often easier because if you do your you do your analysis in atlas space, then all of your, um, then everything that you've created is already in the common coordinate space. So you can pull your data much more easily. And so this is the same data that we registered. You can see that just it looks a little bit different because it's been warped to the atlas. So it's nice and symmetrical and looks a bit tidier. Um, but you can still see here that the probe track is in the same place. And to segment this out, we use the track tracing option within Brain Red Segment. And basically, all you need to do is select regions along the probe. You know, five or six will probably do it, um, just sort of reasonably evenly spaced to um, pick out the probe track and making sure that you go right to the very end of the probe track, um, which can be a bit tricky, but you can zoom in and change the contrast and things in the software. And then once you've done this, um, there's a button trace tracks. What this will do is will basically join up all these points uh, with a fifth that you can determine. And you can choose the number of points along this fit for which the brain region will be reported. Um, and so this is quite flexible software that was specifically designed for neuropixels. Um, but you can basically choose the number of points to correspond to the geometry of your probe. So as a simple example, if your probe was, say, one millimeter long and you reported a thousand points, you would get one marker you know, for every micron. And the output of this software is 
fairly straightforward. The main output is just a spreadsheet, basically, that says for every position um, or recording site along your probe, um, which region that you were recording from. Um, and then you can carry out any kind of analysis you want down the line. But it also allows you to save um, you know, models of these probes and things so you can visualize them in out of space. Um, <clears throat> quickly, I'll just say that this tool can also be used for um, other structures. So we've used it here for electrophysiological probes, but you can also use it for doing very similar things, say with optical fibers, if you've been doing fiber photometry experiments, um, or for viral injections, for example. And it's all part of this brain globe ecosystem of tools for um, computational neuroanatomy. Um, and the key part of this is that these tools work with multiple different atlases. So different atlases for different species, atlases for different developmental stages, different reference images for different kinds of imaging techniques. Um, hopefully there'll be an atlas for what you want to do, but it is currently very kind of rodent focused. So if there are atlases that we don't support that would be useful for your research, please let us know. And if if a 3D good 3D atlas exists, we can package it up within within Brain Globe. And if one doesn't exist, but you have you know some 3D data yourself, um, then we can potentially help you create an atlas. Um, so with that, I will um, say thank you. I there's lots of links here, um, um, which I will post in the Slack. And there's also a tutorial that basically outlines everything I've just said, so you can follow that along and I'll put that in the Slack. <laughs>